Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be doing an experiment for both science and curiosity. I recently built this proximity sensor for another video, which will hopefully come out at a point. It's nothing too spectacular, just some infrared sensors and colored LEDs. I guess you could say making a video about red lights and green lights is a big deal right now. The sensor works pretty well, and you can adjust the sensitivity which will come in handy later. For the experiment part, we'll need this. Car wax. The idea is that by coating a motherboard in wax, it will become water resistant. It shouldn't be too difficult to coat this in wax, and some silicone should work for the power input. The first step is to glove up, since wax is, well, waxy. Before I start, please don't try this method at home on anything important. If this doesn't work, I'm only out a few dollars. I sped up the application process since I'm sure most of you don't want to watch 10 minutes of that. The bottom of the board was pretty easy, but the top of the board is a bit more difficult thanks to all the nooks and crannies. Time to let this sit for a bit with the lights off. You aren't supposed to wax a car in direct light, so I assume it's the same for a motherboard. It's been a few minutes, so time to clean this off. I have to admit, the wax gives this a very nice shine. and it still works after the code, so that's a plus. Before going full send, I want to place some water on this to see what happens. All three lights stay on, which is interesting, but that might just be from the water messing with the infrared sensors. If the water's removed, things seem pretty back to normal. Now it's time to go full send. For this, we'll be using a container of water. The green light is either crying for mercy or giving us the go-ahead. Immediately after being placed in the water, the green light turned off. And the infrared proximity function doesn't seem to be working, but that could just be the water messing with the sensors. Messing with the potentiometers brings the green light back to life, and for a few seconds it looks like things might be working. By this point, bubbles are forming on one of the chips which is a warning sign for what's about to happen. Some jostling causes the lights to freak out a bit, but I think this board is dying. Lifting it so that the infrared sensors are just out of the water doesn't do any good either. Even after removing it from the water, there's still no luck bringing normal functionality back. And this is why we don't try things at home. Luckily, I'm only out a few dollars on this. In the end, the wax does seem to help, but the problem is covering every nook and cranny. Even one or two exposed leads is enough to kill this board. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.